Okay. Thank you for reminding me, really. <laughs> Completely forgot the microphone. Uh, okay. So, uh, let me then repeat. Uh, here I just summarized uh, the bits from the previous lecture, which uh, I will be uh, using, and what is written here. So, suppose we know, uh, and we discussed uh, its shape, the joint probability density of um, and eigenvalues of uh, matrix from real Geneva ensemble. Uh, some of these uh, eigenvalues can be real and others come in complex uh, conjugate pairs. And we are interested in uh, calculating, uh, in particular, uh, one of the most important objects in random matrix theory is just calculating uh, the marginal densities or uh, frequently called also eigenvalue correlation functions. So we just integrate out a uh, part of these variables. So all but n. So this index n uh, means how many remain upon integrating out. Uh, and uh, okay, uh, here should be a small n. Uh, capital N is size of the matrix. Small n is uh, the number of arguments uh, um, remaining after integrating out. And I discussed that it's given, in general, uh, this ensemble um, shows nice integrability properties. And the result is always given as a pfaffian of the matrix, uh, which is made of blocks two by two, and as many as n square blocks, n by n uh, matrix uh, made of blocks two by two. Each block two by two um, entries um, here have some particular sim uh, symmetries, namely to make uh, uh, necessarily, Pfaffian is defined for skew symmetric or anti-symmetric matrix, and these entries uh, satisfy corresponding properties, making the whole matrix anti-symmetric. And uh, entries of these two by two matrix, they are made um, or obtained uh, by uh, integrating the kernel, which I did not specify so far. One of the uh, first goals of this lecture will be uh, to give you hints how uh, uh, one uh, can get this or recover this uh, kernel. But suppose we know it, then we integrate it with uh, against the function which is written here, which possesses the property that it's anti-symmetric with respect to change of z1 to z2. Uh, and other entries, uh, k and w, also obtained by some uh, similar, different by similar expressions. Uh, I will need only g for my uh, present uh, goals, so uh, I do not uh, give this expression that can be found in, in the lecture notes. So this is what we discussed last time. And uh, I mentioned that, of course, uh, if we know this k, then uh, uh, this k encapsulates all important properties, but how to get it? Uh, in the original papers, uh, by uh, Borodin Sinclair, by uh, Forrester Nagao, they were uh, computed explicitly using uh, a method of skew orthogonal uh, polynomials. Computation is quite technically involved, ingenious computation. Um, but I, I'd like to give you uh, a bypass um, suggested uh, by Zomers based on uh, some observation due to Edelman which allows to uh, really to, to get this kernel relatively cheap. So what is this? Uh, namely, suppose, um, uh, and in fact, uh, this will be the main information uh, that I need for my, uh, for my modest goals. I'm only interested in uh, the mean density, which is just R1, so n equal 1. R1 is a function of z1. Then, obviously, uh, this will be equal to a Pfaffian of just a single block, one, one block. In one, one block, of, by antisymmetry, these two entries are zero because uh, they satisfy this property. So one, one, they are uh, zero. And uh, so we have just G11 minus G11. So we know that Pfaffian is just G11. So what is G11? G11 is just integral of this k, uh, still mysterious kn of z1z, then this f, which is uh, written uh, above, f of z 
z1 and we integrate over z. So we just take this f, uh, substitute here, integrate, and we get um, over, uh, these two parts gen will generate um, two parts, which I will write in the following way, r1c plus, uh, okay, depending on, uh, with argument z, z, uh, what is z1, um, plus delta of y1, okay, um, not, not much space, maybe better in order to make it readable to use next line. Um, so it's, again, I'm repeating, R1 um, C, where C uh, stands for uh, complex, divided on Z1 plus delta of Y1, uh, R1, R, uh, R standing for real, depending only on X1. Where, where this uh, R, R1C in particular, just by straightforward substitution and integration, is equal to Kn uh, of Z1, Z1 bar, complex conjugate times two exponential of minus z1 squared plus z1 bar squared divided by 2. Uh, error function, error function of the argument square root of 2 times modulus of y1, um, where x and y, just remind you, is a real and imaginary part of, of z's, always with corresponding indices, times, times, uh, signum of y1. Okay, this is uh, R1c, and uh, one can get also uh, related expression for R1r just by integrating this in, in terms of Kn, which is still unknown. And now, um, so what is the meaning of this? Uh, the clear meaning of this, we know that R1 is just the density of um, eigenvalues around point Z or Z1 in the complex plane. So these two uh, terms have a very clear meaning. This is the density of complex eigenvalues around uh, point Z1. And uh, this delta term, which uh, pins uh, imaginary part to zero, just uh, tells us that R1 is the density of uh, purely real eigenvalues situated on, 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 on the real axis. So uh, the trick that uh, Zomer suggested, which I will very briefly uh, describe, just um, uh, how, it, how it's done, it, it goes to the following. Uh, basically, the idea is that one can provide completely, or relatively independent method of um, evaluating explicitly this function R1 and then comparing with this expression, recover the kernel. So what is uh, the idea? The idea goes to the following uh, observation of uh, Edelman. So let us uh, come back to our Geneber matrix G. is a matrix uh, of real, um, real entries, n by n. And then suppose, suppose, Uh, that we know that it has uh, a particular eigenvalue, uh, an eigenvalue pair, a pair of complex conjugate, um, uh, uh, there is a pair uh, of eigenvalues, x plus and minus iy. Then, uh, it's very well known fact uh, of linear algebra that in this case one can represent uh, matrix G in the form which is known as incomplete Schur decomposition, namely, I will write it 
in the following form. I will write it O, uh, explain what is me, and, and then uh, I will write this metric in block, in blocks. So here will be two by two block in the following form, X, B minus C, X. So X on the diagonal, and this is X is exactly this X, a real part of the corresponding complex eigenvalue. B and minus C are some parameters naturally related to Y, I will explain. It's, it's easy, just to, uh, one needs to solve uh, this two by two eigenvalue problem and uh, one will find how it's related. Then here we have some matrix W. Here we have all zeros, just two columns of zeros. And here we have a matrix which I denote as GN minus two. And finally, O transpose. So O uh, is a matrix which is orthogonal equal to identity matrix, but it's not general orthogonal matrix. It's made uh, of two, uh, in, of pair of orthogonal eigenvectors, in fact, and uh, can be written in terms of so-called, for, for those who heard about this, uh, so-called uh, um, householder reflections. But uh, important, there's just a particular case of orthogonal matrices. In fact, uh, matrices of this form, they leave uh, th their particular uh, some manifold of, uh, of, of all orthogonal matrices is called uh, Stiefel manifold. Uh, and uh, why this decomposition is, uh, is a convenient one? Okay, let me just specify uh, um, how B and C is related to, uh, to Y. First of all, we should ensure, uh, one always can ensure that uh, BC is positive and B is larger than C. And finally, um, y, y is just square root of BC. And we, we, uh, we assume uh, Y is positive. Okay, uh, so this, uh, always there is such a decomposition. Now, how one uses this? Um, this decomposition is basically change of variables from variables uh, uh, N square uh, real variables in G, we come to, uh, to variables uh, just uh, arranged uh, in a different way. So with this change of variables uh, associated a change in uh, integration volume in a measure dg, which was element-wise measure, measure um, for Gini ensemble. Uh, but now, uh, with some due effort, uh, Edelman uh, demonstrated that it, uh, one can recalculate it in new variables. And it's, okay, I will write it probably just uh, suppress uh, various um, constant factors and write only relevant part. B minus C, then determinant, uh, determinant of G n minus two, this block, um, this block um, minus X uh, identity matrix of size n minus two um, squared plus y squared identity matrix. Uh, now, and now differentials of, of, of all db, dc, dx, um, and now or further uh, just element-wise measure over dg n minus two, uh, element-wise measure product of all independent entries of DW, and then measure on this Stiefel manifold, uh, spanned by, uh, by, by O. So uh, now, basically, if we are interested in, um, in the distribution or in the density of uh, probability density of X and Y, we should just basically um, may, make a, another change of variables from B, C to, uh, to Y and one, one extra variable delta, and then integrate out everything uh, um, apart from X and Y. Uh, so in this way, we will see that basically, um, well, but of course, we should remember that there is 
the measure, uh, the weight, uh, the Geneber weight minus one half trace of G G T, and we can, should re-express everything the, uh, this uh, weight uh, in terms of uh, new variables. It's very simple exercise, and then since everything is Gaussian uh, and it's possible to integrate out uh, explicitly uh, with uh, very uh, modest effort, uh, everything apart from x and y, uh, this uh, could be also a useful exercise, and then one ends, uh, ends up with showing that basically what we called um, uh, R1, R1c, one obtains uh, as now function of x and y, which are real dimensionally part of that, z is proportional with known uh, proportionality constant to uh, modulus of y, uh, exponential, y squared minus x squared, uh, uh, error function of square root of 2y, uh, and then, most importantly, I write it in the following way, determinant, uh, this basically bit, uh, g uh, minus x identity matrix squared plus y squared identity matrix, and the, and the bracket stand for averaging over measure of, okay, let me call it gn minus 2, where gn minus 2 is basically again the uh, Geneber measure, but just for the matrices of size uh, n by 2 uh, by n by 2 rather than n by n. So uh, you may ask what we, uh, what we gain, but we, we gain a lot because, because now we can compare this expression with this expression and provided there are efficient ways of evaluating square determinant uh, which is written, uh, performing this averaging of uh, uh, distribution of uh, Geneber matrices of size, uh, of arbitrary size, we can read off just what is this, what is this Kn, which more, uh, you may see that it's more or less equal to this expectation. Now, the last bit, all this uh, was known um, from uh, Edelman's paper, and Zomers just added a very nice observation that uh, this determinant uh, can be very efficiently, uh, okay, this is basically, one can write further this average of determinant, it's, it's a product of determinant of G uh, minus Z times determinant of G uh, minus Z bar. This is basically product of um, two determinants, and there is very efficient way of averaging uh, products of determinants uh, over uh, Gaussian distributed uh, ma matrices with Gauss Gaussian distributed entries. Uh, I hope that Misha Poplowski at least mentioned the method of integration of anti-commuting variables or Grassmann variables. Uh, one can represent each of these determinants as Gaussian integral uh, using um, vectors with n anti-commuting uh, variables, and then uh, in, in half a page to get to really this average, to calculate this average. This is a relatively simple exercise, and in this way, one obtains uh, really uh, this kernel. So let me now um, write explicit expression for this kernel. Okay. So in this way one recovers the kernel. And this is uh, this formula for it. So k n of z1, z2 equal to z1 minus z2 divided by 2 square root of 2 pi uh, exponential of z1, z2. And now the main 
part of it, or at least most important part. It's a function which I will define in the moment. It's incomplete gamma function divided by n minus 2 factorial, where, factorial, um, where the function, uh, incomplete gamma function, n a uh, divided by n minus 1 factorial is, OK, there are several definitions. Uh, one definition is uh, just exponential times uh, incomplete uh, Taylor series for this exponential, or truncated, better to say. Truncated after uh, n minus 1 terms. So this is just definition of this function. It has uh, convenient, um, convenient uh, integral representation, um, which uh, can be used to extract various uh, useful properties, especially asymptotic behavior of this. Yes, this. Uh, so uh, this is explicit expression. So not after all this work, not that, uh, that, uh, not that complicated expression, manageable expression. Um, and having this in mind, uh, having this at our disposal, one can then write explicitly uh, formulas for, uh, finally, for R1 and uh, R1 uh, density of complex eigenvalues and density of um, uh, real eigenvalues. I just get rid of this part here. Now, we, this was an auxiliary part, just showing how one can get access to this uh, kernel. Yeah. No, uh, just comparing, comparing these two expressions. You see that it's basically up to some factors. It's just, just it. Because it's, it, these are two dependent calculations. OK. So let me write down then explicit formulas for for density of complex and real eigenvalues. Um, it's easier to, to erase it and write again. So it's two modulus of y um, divided by square root of 2 pi exponential of 2y squared uh, error function of this square root of 2 times uh, times modulus of y modulus of y and times this incomplete gamma function n minus 1 uh, okay i write it x squared plus y squared divided by n minus 2 factorial. OK, this is uh, the density of complex eigenvalues around the point in complex plane with coordinates x and y, or x plus i, y, if it's in complex plane. And uh, with some effort, uh, knowing the kernel, and knowing really, I mean, using this integration that I, that, um, I showed, one also recovers density of real eigenvalues, depending on x. So this, the first term is just, again, given in terms of incomplete gamma function. Uh, square root of 2 pi n minus 2 factorial. But also there is another term. Um, which most of the time, uh, at, at least for main part, is immaterial, but f I, I need to write it down explicitly. Um, integral from 0 to x, 
exponential minus u squared o2 u to n minus 1 du something ah exponential of okay uh, exponential minus x squared over 2 okay so some uh, ex also explicit formula uh, for the density of uh, real eigenvalues and these formulas are valid f uh, just remind you for uh, even for any even size of the matrix um, Honestly, I do not remember if, if there are some essential modifications. I think for, um, for re density of real eigenvalues, there is, there is some slight modification for, uh, for, odd, um, for odd n, uh, but uh, in eff effectively, they are uh, not very important. OK, now we have everything for finite size matrix that we need. And uh, let us analyze uh, the most interesting limit when n, n is big, n much larger than 1. Here, uh, we emit, uh, the first fact that we will use is well-known uh, property of this incomplete gamma function, namely that uh, limiting value of the incomplete gamma function when its second argument, when its argument but uh, this is a parameter when this argument scaled with n, so I will write it n times a divided by n minus 2 factorial. It has a well defined limit in this case, n tending to infinity, and limit is 1 if a uh, is smaller than 1 uh, and uh, 0 if a is larger than 1. Uh, useful exercise to see uh, uh, to see it, but it most easily for me it's most easily seen by performing uh, by rescaling uh, T with n and performing uh, Laplace method evaluation of this integral. And then you will see uh, that uh, for a uh, smaller or larger than one, basically uh, corresponding uh, stationary point will belong or not belong to uh, the domain of integration and which basically controls its behavior. So one or zero. Okay. Um, in fact, uh, in fact, um, or maybe I, later on I, I will need also more precise, more precise asymptotics. In fact, what happens uh, not when n tends to infinity, but when, it, when n is large, what replaces this zero really? Uh, I need explicit uh, evaluation of the order of this term, but this, when I need it, I will just uh, recall it. It's obtained ex exactly by the same procedure, but just uh, not performing n to infinity, uh, but keeping n finite but large. Okay, so what else we need? We also need, um, okay, so this shows that it's meaningful to consider values of uh, x and y, or uh, generically value of z, rescaled with square root of n, in order to have an uh, argument of the function um, to be of order of n. And then, if we do such a rescaling, we also need um, asymptotic behavior of uh, error function. And uh, I will write it for you. Uh, Explicit expression for uh, error de or definition for this function error it was given last time. I won't give it. It's just given uh, in terms of some uh, integral with Gaussian integrand in some limits. But using it, it's straightforward to get uh, that asymptotically when y is much larger than 1, this is 1 over square root of 2 pi, 1 divided by Modulus so of y, okay, y, and exponential minus 2y squared. So now uh, we see, let us start with uh, density of complex eigenvalues. Uh, we see that if we substitute these asymptotics and this expression, basically all terms cancel apart from the constant. So if you substitute and, cal uh, and calculate this constant, 
you um, you will get you will get the following that uh, R1 uh, so density of complex eigenvalues at Z when uh, n is large it's 1 over pi where modulus of Z is smaller than square root of n and zero otherwise. So we see, uh, we recovered what we expected, uh, this Geneber circle of radius square root of n, if you remember my first lecture. So uh, complex eigenvalues of uh, Geneb real Geneber ensemble of big size, they are more or less uniformly filling in, uh, OK. <laughs> It's more elliptic than <laughs> circle, but it's meant to be a circle of radius square root of n. Uh, and it's just un uniformly fill the interior of this circle uh, for large enough n uh, with the density 1 over pi. So uh, what, what, about, what about real eigenvalues? Um, simple. Uh, study shows that if one scales, uh, as one uh, expected uh, to do, x with square root of n, then this term is subleading. And then we use this in, uh, uh, relation, asymptotic relation, and get that r1, uh, 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 density of real eigenvalues, equal to uh, 1 over square root of pi. One, 1 over square root of pi if modulus of x smaller than square root of n and 0 otherwise. So how many, then we immediately can conclude how many uh, eigenvalues typically we have real. We just have them in this interval with constant density 1 over square root of pi. So we have square root of, of order of square root of n uh, eigenvalues. So we see that majority of eigenvalues of real Geneva ensemble of order of n, they are complex. Uh, but still, there is uh, of order of square root of n exactly on the real axis with uniform density. This is. Um, uh, Precisely inside, uh, I mean, on, on this uh, diameter uh, inside the circle. Um, when I said that it's uniformly filling in this, uh, this um, uh, circle, I cheated a little bit. I mean, or, or rather, uh, it depends how you look at the problem. If you take a magnifying glass and look at small vicinity, um, of order 